Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa halal family Welcome to the channel You beautiful people I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful day I found a really cool video on uh, YouTube guys It's by Al Jazeera AJ Plus It's titled When Indonesia Fought Dutch Colonization and Won So uh, without further ado Let's get started with this video It's December 9th 1947 In the village of Rawagade in Indonesia Day. soldiers are storming home okay. and banging on doors in the early morning. Two years before, Indonesians had declared independence from three centuries of Dutch colonization. Three centuries? Almost 300 years? But the Netherlands was wow. desperately clinging on. Three centuries? Were under orders to, quote, cleanse the area of pro-independence fighters. No way. When the villagers said they knew nothing, males, some as young as 15, were separated and interrogated. Wow. These are the words of a survivor who was five years old oh, no. during the Rawagade massacre. Wow. There were dogs looking for those who hid in the woods. The dogs barked, followed by more gunshots. Oh, no. That river turned red with blood. On wow. that day in Rawagade, the Dutch army and another, killed another, 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 431 people. Official Dutch sources downplay the death toll. But these photos of the massacre were discovered decades later. In them, two men in military uniforms stand next to a ditch filled with bodies. At the time, they were the sole photographic evidence of Dutch mass executions during the war. It was a lack of evidence like these photos that helped the Netherlands conceal the true extent of its brutality for decades. So how were the full horrors of Rawagade eventually revealed? And what else did the Dutch Empire unleash on Indonesia? From the outset, massacres have been part of parcel of Dutch colonialism. These are the type of stuff that they tried to hide and instead they point finger at the the oppressed. massacre is a microcosm of Dutch atrocities in Indonesia spanning centuries. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, the story of how the Dutch were forced to confront the massacre can start with this man, Jeffrey Pondog. He was born in Indonesia a few years after the massacre in Rawagade, today mm. known as Bolong Sari. Jeffrey grew up hearing okay, stories the about Dutch colonial violence. When he was 16, Jeffrey moved to the Netherlands and he wow. was in for a culture shock. So were we that do here 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 voorgesteld door the stories, the televisie and the kranten die schrijven naar ja en en zijn dus zeg maar de boosdoeners. En toen dacht ik van er moet iets wat gebeuren. So he got to work. He became sort of a public figure, writing open letters to the Dutch government and speaking to the media about the impacts of Dutch colonialism. In 2011, so, uh, Jeffrey and human rights lawyers achieved what many said was impossible. They won the first successful lawsuit against the Netherlands yes. before the Rawagade massacre after a Dutch That's court good. bypassed awesome. the statute of limitations, allowing a group of widows to sue. In the Counted settlement, them. the Netherlands paid $21,000 to each of the nine surviving widows and offered an apology. The lawsuit got the ball rolling. More lawsuits for other executions during the war were filed. In 2020, it's the not going to do anything. Twenty-one thousand. Calling the atrocities. Excessive violence on the part of the Dutch in those years. And in 2022, the Prime Minister also apologized after a government-sponsored study called the Netherlands' actions during the Indonesian War of Independence, quote, systematic and extreme violence. But some, like That's Jeffrey, not bring accused anybody back. of using words like excessive and extreme to shield itself from international accountability. That they were bang to make the damage that they have done, one-on-one, to pay. And that's why they have a push. 
So what other colonial atrocities have the Dutch kept quiet about? Exactly. Let's go from the beginning of Dutch colonization to the Indonesian War of Independence to understand how atrocities characterize Dutch rule in the region. Dutch colonization in Indonesia began in the 17th century when there was a grab for empire century. between European powers. The Dutch had colonies from Africa to North and South America to Asia, but our story will focus right here in modern day in Indonesia, Indonesia, then known as the Dutch East Indies. In the early mm, 1600s, Governor Indian. General of the Dutch East India Company, Jan Pietserzoon Kuhn, traveled to the Banda Islands in modern day Indonesia. Back then, the islands were the sole source of a prized commodity. Nutmeg. Nutmeg. The island traded with the Dutch at first, but the Dutch had other plans. They wanted a monopoly on the spice trade. And then Jan Pietersen Koen decided to end the conflict once and for all and started a war in Banda, which resulted in a massacre. So, uh, like another massacre. And enslavement uh, of almost all of the Bandanese people. This is a classic case of genocide. That's Remco Robin. He's a professor at the University of Amsterdam researching Dutch colonial era violence. He researches numerous instances of massacres during centuries of Dutch colonization, painting the empire as a war machine. 350 years afterwards, there was hardly a year went by uh, without several wars going on. After the Banda uh, massacre, the Dutch took over these regions in modern-day Indonesia, violently suppressing resistance just like the whole to their conquests. People were forced into slave labor to produce commodities wow. that the Netherlands would sell for large profits in Europe and North America. In addition to slavery, the Dutch imposed other brutal forms of forced labor. During the 19th century, the island of Java faced the cultivation system, which is when villages had to set aside parts of their land to produce commodities for the Dutch. Wow. Meanwhile, villagers themselves were often deprived of the crops necessary for their own survival. So many oh. Javanese died from malnutrition and from diseases caused by unsanitary working conditions. Wow. Colonial profits are for a large part based on the forced labor. In the 1840s and 1850s, as much as 30 or even 40 percent or more of the state budget came out of the cultivation system. Before we go into how Indonesians the Dutch rule, let's talk about how they resisted the Netherlands' colonial presence for centuries. Although Dutch rule in the East Indies was harsh, there were several examples of resistance during this period. The Ake Sultanate in northern Sumatra had resisted foreign domination throughout its history. And in 1873, the Sultanate fought back against the Netherlands' attempts at invasion. But nice. Ake was also the source of the world's largest black pepper supply at mm. that time. And the Dutch weren't prepared to give up such a valuable commodity. So oh. they turned to scorched earth tactics. Everything ah. was a target. Homes, fields, irrigation systems. Anything that could be used to help the resistance was destroyed. The war oh. lasted for three decades. By 1904, tens of thousands of Akanese had fled or were killed. But word of the Ake Sultanate spread. Indonesia embraced <sighs> the East Indian Island. The leader of the movement is Dr. Sarkana. By the early 20th century, the war had set the stage for a unified independence movement across the archipelago. The Indonesian National Awakening was when populations across the Dutch East Indies formed a collective identity in opposition nice. to foreign domination. Mass meetings at many places in Java and Sumatra called upon the people to present a united front to the Dutch and their allies. It became a powerful threat to Dutch rule. The Dutch awesome. Empire tried to repress the movement by exiling and imprisoning revolutionaries. But then World War II began. Japan's march to the new order in Asia staggers the imagination. Japan invaded wow. the islands, taking them from the Netherlands. But on August 15, 1945, That's a lot of people. Japan announced its surrender. Indonesian leaders declared their independence two days later. Since the defeat of Japan, 
the administrative buildings for the whole of Java have been taken over and run by the self-appointed regime. Head of the Indonesian movement is the self-styled president, Dr. Sukarno. Sukarno. But the Dutch still weren't willing to let go, which led to the Indonesian War of Independence. Villages wow, they still didn't want to stop. People were massacred. Cultural heritage and artifacts were looted and crops were obliterated. The Indonesian forces themselves also applied scorched earth uh, tactics uh, in order to destroy everything and not to give it into the hands of, of the Dutch. And with the advent of TV and radio, their fight was broadcast across the globe. With participants being chased oh. and arrested, it's a hectic scene. And the military situation became worse and worse. The Dutch couldn't control the areas they just occupied. Hmm. Secondly, among the elites in the Netherlands, the political and also economic elites, there was an increasing tendency to end the war. After international pressure and a lengthy diplomatic process, hmm. the Dutch transferred power to Indonesia on December 27, 1949. For decades, that's the date the Netherlands recognized as Indonesia's Independence Day. December. And that's just one reason why Indonesians say apologies for Dutch actions during the War of Independence are incomplete. Some want reparations for slavery and the extraction of resources that decimated the archipelago while making the Netherlands one of the richest countries on earth. The geld that they do for God, with blood on their hands, they do, zeg maar, ja, hun rijkdom hier, hier, zeg maar, uh, mogelijk hebben gemaakt. Ja, aan ons toch, uh, zeg maar, teruggeven. En voor wat? Voor de Indies volop. In fact, exactly. statues in the Netherlands of former colonizers, like this one of Jan Pietersen Kuhn, glorify those who brutalized Indonesians. The Dutch East India Company, or Dutch colonialism uh, in general, is still romanticized. It was found that 50% of the Dutch were thinking that colonialism was more something to be proud of than to be ashamed of. And mm. other former Dutch colonies are seeking and the justice for their historical they did. traumas. In 2023, the Netherlands apologized for its role in the Caribbean slave trade, calling it a crime against humanity. Still, economic disparities continue in these former plantation colonies. The story books, he tells the geschiedenis of Asia. Omdat ze vanuit gaan dat het land die 8000 kilometer ver is van Nederland is. Want het zo is. The Dutch aren't the only ones with an enduring It's not the first country, right? To find out how French colonization impacts race in the next one, French. Today, watch this explainer next. Subhanallah. That will be for another video. But, you know, shout out to Al Jazeera for looking into this and then making this video. It's crazy, subhanAllah. They, they ruled Indonesia for over 300 years, took nutmeg as well as black pepper, which was basically, you can consider it as gold of today, and killed so many Indonesians. Now, Netherlands, are, they're like one of the richest countries where Indonesia, for example, is suffering. And then the question comes, for example, in, in European countries, that the, why are we having so many immigrants come over? We shouldn't have gone and ruined these people's countries, their livelihood. If you guys hadn't done that, they wouldn't come to your country. You went to their country first, ruined it. This is not only, for example, in Indonesia. There's all over the world that they um, colonized and then had slavery. And then now, for example, they're backing other people that are, that are causing uh, massacres and then taking people's land, saying that this is our God-given land that God has promised us. Similarly, the Dutch did that too. Went to another person's country and took over and killed them and massacred them. Turned them into slaves for their own benefit. And now they just turn back around and say, I'm sorry, give the, the only nine people, I think they said, that the widows $21,000. What is that going to do? That's not going to, like, you see them, subhanAllah, being so old their whole life. They, they lost their, um, you know, husband. 50 60 years ago they've been living you know next to nothing now they're giving them money that's not going to do anything no matter how much money they give them it's not going to bring anything back um we'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about the colonization um by european countries and what's going on around the world uh, today so 
please put your comment section your comments in the uh, comment section below and if you have another video for me to check out you can include that uh, also please include the link as always thank you very much guys for your love and support i hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day take care of yourself and your family inshallah i'll see you guys in the next video take care and wassalam